Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's video, we are going to be talking about several tragedies that unfortunately occurred on the Pacific Crest Trail. Not only that, we're going to be talking about how these could have been prevented or how we could possibly prevent further tragedies like this from happening. Now, I have a lot of experience on the Pacific Crest Trail. My first adventure was in 2019, which was a record snow year. In 20, 2020, even though it was COVID, I had to go out there for work, so I was able to hike a bunch, as well as 2021 and 2022. Before we get started with today's video, I want to let you know that I'm going to be giving some channel updates at the end of the video. So if you're interested, in stick around. I am going to be doing a new series every weekend entitled Brian's Bedtime Stories. I'll have more information at that at the end. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, anything you can goes a long way. My PayPal, Venmo, and also my PO Box address, all that information will be linked in the description as always. Now the Pacific Crest Trail is a National Scenic Trail. It goes from the border of Mexico all the way up to Canada. It is 2,650 miles long. Most hikers that attempt this through hike, they start anywhere from mid-March to the end of May. The reason I wanted to do this video is because this has been an extremely high record-breaking snow year. These are some pictures provided by Yosemite Hospitality. As you can see, everything is just completely snowed in. Many of these parks, including Yosemite, have been closed for a while. And as we get into the video, I'll show you some more of the trails off the Pacific Crest Trail that have been closed for a while. This will not only pose many challenges for hikers starting early, but also those that are starting in more of a prime time because as the snow melts, it will create massive runoff. The streams and rivers that people have to cross will be raging rivers. I'll have some pictures and examples. We've already had many cases of people getting lost or stranded out in the snow. Some even actually passed away in avalanches already in 2022. In this video, we're going to cover several cases of people that unfortunately passed away on their hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. As I stated, I also wanted to talk about some safety precautions and things that you can do, especially if you are set on starting early. Now, I don't know how the Pacific Crest Trail organization is going to handle this, if they're going to be restricting permits or not. One thing, though, to really consider is hiking with a partner or a group of people. Even if you haven't planned your hike to go with anybody, there will be other people on the trail that you can meet up with and pair off with. It's a very good idea and will help keep you safe. If this is something that you're considering and are feeling uneasy about because of the high snow year, use your gut instincts. And again, this video is not to fear monger or anything like that. I just want to provide some helpful tips and hopefully prevent any accidents and disasters this hiking season. One thing that you want to always keep in mind, whatever year you're hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, the desert isn't flat. You will go through several extensive mountain ranges. You'll often be in a climate where it's very warm and hot. Then once you ascend a mountain and get to the top, you could be looking at miles and miles of snow fields. And that's something that you have to be prepared for, especially this year. There's going to be a lot of snow. Now, this is just one of the maps we're going to be talking about. The first case that happened on Fuller Ridge, which is within the first 200 miles of the trail. Sadly, this is where a young man by the name of Trevor Lair lost his life in 2020 in March. Now, these are some pictures of the area where he slipped and fell during 2020. This is sort of hard to see what it actually looks like because the pictures don't do it justice really but the angles really are steep and the trail can be very narrow and when you add snow into that mix which on march 27th of 2020 trevor was hiking this section of the trail and a few inches of fresh snow had fallen the night before unfortunately he had not picked up his ice axe or micro spikes he was picking them up in the town of idlewild which he had not yet reached. And in this area, the trail is extremely steep. One misstep, which is what happened to him, right around the Apache Peak area, is very narrow, and unfortunately, he fell over 600 feet. Sadly, he later died from his injuries. And his father and relatives, everybody, 
was of course devastated. These are some maps from the app Far Out, which many hikers use. As you can see, I've circled in red many of the side trails and trails that hikers use to get in and off the trail to access towns, to pick up packages, to resupply. They're all closed due to heavy snows. There are alternate routes to get into Idlewild. One of them is called the Spilter Peak Trail, which intersects with the PCT about a mile before Apache Peak. It is an alternative trail that's often safer to get into the town of Idlewild. Again, this is a picture of the time right around when he slipped. You can see the terrain. This is a picture of Trevor. He was in his prime. He was very athletic. It's a tragedy. Trevor's father then set up the Trevor Spikes program, which is set up for hikers, giving them a 20% discount on Catula Micro Spikes from Nomad Ventures, and they will actually deliver them to the Paradise Valley Cafe or wherever you'd like them to be delivered. This is an example of actual crampons, which I believe many hikers will need this season due to the heavier snows. I'll have that link in the description as well. If you are hiking the trail or any trail and you come upon a situation where you don't feel comfortable with, there is no shame in turning around even if other people are moving forward. If you don't feel comfortable, turn around, go get some rest, check the weather, maybe even detour that section altogether. You can always come back and do it another time when the weather's better, when there isn't snow on the ground. The next case I want to talk about is actually around the same area just south of Anza. It took place in 2022. A young woman was hiking with one of her friends. It was around 11.30 in the morning when the first responders got a call from a Pacific Crest Trail hiker just west of Table Mountain Truck Trail, which I'm going to have a picture of here for you in a second. They were responding to this woman. They said that her friend had gotten a little bit separated from her. She seemed to be not feeling well, sort of showing signs of heat exhaustion. The temperature at the time was over 100 degrees. The woman who called 911 caught up to her friend. She was passed out on the trail. She was barely coherent, wasn't making any sense. Originally, firefighters were sent to the area, but they couldn't immediately find an access point. So the Riverside County Sheriff's Office dispatched a helicopter crew, which also initiated a ground search. They eventually came upon the unconscious hiker, which was right around noon, so a little bit over a half hour later after the call. Emergency services immediately started giving her fluids and trying to revive her. They were able to get her on a stretcher. They were transporting her to a hospital by an ambulance. She did have a few injuries. We don't know what those were, but unfortunately she was later pronounced dead of heat exhaustion. After this tragedy, the Riverside County Sheriff's Office and Fire Department gave some recommendations. One of them was start early in desert conditions. The best time for hiking is basically before 9 a.m. when it's cooler. Wear long sleeves. There's many garments, long sleeve shirts that have SPF built into it. All kinds of things you can wear that are lightweight, that have venting. Stay hydrated in temperatures like that. When you're doing vigorous activity, you should probably be getting around one liter of water per hour. But know your body, know what you're capable, know your limits. Take frequent breaks, have snacks, get out of the sun when you can. When you find some shade, use it. If you can, please take a GPS device. This can be a lifesaver. I've been recommending these for years. Plan ahead and know where water sources are. Know where backup water sources are in case that one is dried up. Now this year, with the crazy snow melt, water sources should be abundant. So that is one positive thing for all the snow melt this year, which is a great thing. But also never rely on water caches. You never know when they just might not be there. Take good care of your feet. One thing that I like to do is always pack one pair of socks that I only use for sleeping. That way you're not using your filthy, dirty socks that you've been hiking all day to sleep in. Now that's all gonna be personal preference. Again, these are just some tips that I found are helpful for me. I hope that they're helpful for you as always. If you guys have any tips or suggestions, I'd always love to hear from you in the comments section. This is something that I just hope will help a lot of people. This next case is another terrible tragedy that occurred on the John Muir section of the PCT. The two trails run sort of in sync for about 150 miles of the trail. Summer of 2021, a gentleman by the name of Nick Torsia, he was only 37 years old from Fresno. He was hiking with some friends and some of his family members. He was taking a break a little bit away from the Muir Ranch, 
more specifically along the Sally Keys cutoff between the John Muir and Florence Lake trails, he was leaning up or resting up against a tree when a freak storm came up out of nowhere. It had been a beautiful day up until that point. It struck the tree that he was leaning on, obviously knocked him out. His uncle, one of his pastors that was with him, came running. A man that was at the Muir Ranch came up and called 911. This was around 1.25 in the afternoon. His friends came upon Nick within 20 seconds of the lightning strike. They immediately started asking him if he could feel his fingers, feet, and toes. He did nod to that. They immediately noticed that he was covered with all kinds of abrasions. He passed out. They immediately started doing CPR. There was a group of roughly 10 people, including the pastor. There was also a nurse and a doctor on site, as well as a firefighter. They took turns administering CPR. They did this for hours until they realized that they had to call time of death. They were at roughly 8,000 feet, and they reported saying that they did see lightning off in the distance that day around the time of the strike, but it seemed that the other ones were much further away. This is another picture of Nick. These people were all very experienced, and this was just a freak storm that came up. They just couldn't believe it. It was one of those things, a one in a million chance. I mean, there's only been 14 other fatalities and 72 injuries from lightning in California since 1950. Now that's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration National Centers for Environmental Information. According to the National Weather Service, only about 10% of people that are struck by lightning actually die from the voltage. In this case, they said that Nick had just literally gone under that tree for a minute to have a snack, maybe possibly change part of his gear out. The storm didn't seem to be anywhere around them, so I don't think anyone could have done anything. But obviously, in any type of inclement weather, especially thunderstorms, if you are out on trail, try and get to as low as elevation as possible. If there is a building of some sort around, seek shelter in that. Never seek shelter under a tree. Just try and get to a safe spot. I know that can be difficult at times. If you feel your hair standing up or you can't get away from the storm, try and get as low to the ground as possible with as less of your body touching the ground as possible. The last thing I want to cover in this video is river crossings because really in any year, river crossings can be the most dangerous part of hiking, especially the PCT when you're going up through the Sierra, Oregon, Washington. There's a lot of rivers that can be very difficult to traverse. Now, especially in a high snow year when the snow melt is just crazy, those logs that sometimes in past years you might have been able to cross the river, they're going to be completely submerged or completely underwater. One of the best times to try and traverse a river is in the morning when the flow will be less but again this is going to be up to your judgment if it looks like something you can't do wait for other hikers or try and find another way around it because a river can turn into something like this i've seen rivers like this on the pct where it just looks like basically impossible to cross but if you take the time and hike up or down the river you can often find a better way of crossing or wait for other people Check the Far Out app. There's usually people that leave tips and comments on where it might be safe to cross. The best thing I can say is just use your judgment. If you don't feel comfortable with something, it's totally okay to turn around or try it another day or bypass that area completely. Please everyone share their comments, their experiences with other hikers, and please everyone be safe out there. I want to dedicate this video to Nick and Trevor and the woman that lost her life. Unfortunately, we do not know her name. And anyone who lost a loved one or friend, family member, whoever it was to a through hike or hike like this, my thoughts and prayers are with you. My thoughts and prayers go out to anyone that is planning on doing a through hike this year, wishing you all the best and success in your hike. If you have any questions for me or anybody in the comment section, definitely get as much feedback as you can. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you all for all your support. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. As I stated in the beginning, I'm starting a new series of videos that I'm going to be uploading every weekend. 
entitled Brian's Bedtime Stories. I explained this in my first episode this past Saturday. For those of you that may have missed it, it's basically just going to be a collection of stories from my hiking and camping experiences, my friends, other search and rescue people that have possibly told me the stories. Some will be trail lore, but most of them are true stories. Now, obviously, sometimes stories are sent to me secondhand, and you know how that goes. It's like the game of telephone. Sometimes the park that it took place in might be not the same one that it actually took place in. But these are not going to be stories where you can do a Google search and find information on them. These are more stories to just listen to before bed and hopefully help you fall asleep. I'll have a link to the first video, which is entitled The Hiker, that I uploaded this past Saturday. I know a lot of people were upset because I did a to be concluded. The only reason I did that, I'm not a type of person that would ever do that. I just wasn't sure if it was content that you all wanted. I wanted to get your feedback, hear what you all had to say. So I won't do that again. And it's also, that story is quite long. If I had done it in one video, it was probably going to be over 40 minutes. But moving forward, the Brian's Bedtime Story videos will be roughly 20 minutes in length, and I'll be uploading those every Saturday or Sunday. Please let me know your feedback. I love hearing from you guys. Those are a work in progress. I will be uploading part two of The Hiker this Saturday. Hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Take care.